Hello everyone, Blackbox here. In this video I'm gonna show you how to fly an Arnav GPS approach. For this we'll be flying a GPS approach into Munich runway 08 left. I have already selected the Arnav 08 left approach in the MCDU. And I'm just quickly going to check that both GPS receivers are working. They are working perfectly and so on the progress page we have the message GPS primary and the accuracy is high. Next we have to make sure that the approach stored in the FMS is the same as on the approach chart. So the final approach waypoint is called Magat. We have to cross that uh, fix at 5000 feet. Then we have a descent profile of 3 degrees. The distance between Magat and the runway threshold is 11 miles and the inbound track is 081. That is all correct. We're just checking the waypoints for the missed approach. So it's Delta Mike 551. We'll have to be at least 1900 feet at that point. Then further on Delta Mike 552 and then Mike at 5000 feet. That is all correct and so let's go to the performance page. Here we've inserted the weather data and also the minimum descent altitude. Here I would like to point out that on the approach chart you have two different minimas displayed. And there you'll see that the LNAV minimum is a little bit higher than the VNAV minimum. Now the VNAV, i.e. the vertical navigation minimum, can only be used if you are using vertical navigation modes. In our case the final approach mode. If you on the other hand are using the modes NAV and flight path angle, then you would have to take the LNAV minimum because the flight path angle does not count as a vertical guidance mode. Okay, but since uh, our aircraft is capable of the vertical guidance, we can uh, dial in the VNAV minimum of 1890 feet. So that about covers it, and uh, so we'll start the approach now, and uh, just recheck the latest weather, and uh, well, it's uh, gotten worse. The visibility is now at about 2000 meters and the vertical visibility at around 500 feet. Okay, so we're just about to turn onto the final track. NAV mode is still active and we have uh, not armed the approach yet. As I've already mentioned uh, in the beginning, it is uh, very important that you cross the final approach waypoint at the published altitude, in our case 5000 feet. Okay, in a moment you'll see the vertical deviation bar on the right side of the primary flight display moving in. Now this bar represents the vertical deviation and if it's one dot high or low that means it's 100 feet high or below the vertical path. If it moves towards the second dot, then uh, you are 200 feet high or low. So it doesn't matter at what altitude the aircraft is on the approach path, these uh, displacement indications are an absolute value. So one dot always equals 100 feet displacement and two dots always 200 feet displacement. I've just armed the approach mode it's the same button that you would use for the ILS approach mode. And on the FMA you can now see the approach modes approach NAV and final in blue. Now once the aircraft reaches the final approach waypoint, a new common mode will appear, the so-called final approach mode. That means that the autopilot system will now follow the correct inbound track 
and also maintain the correct vertical path. Selecting flaps 2. I want one more thing. Of course you'll be rechecking the crossing altitudes in the descent to make sure you are still on the correct path. And here is the final approach mode and the aircraft is going to start its descent. So like uh, on any other non-precision approach, you'll cross-check the distance and the corresponding crossing altitude. However, in the GPS approach there's a minor difference. All the distances shown are the track distance to the runway and uh, they do not show any DME distance from a uh, ground station. And so in order not to look at the wrong DME distance, you can uh, switch off the VOR indications on your navigation display. Or just make sure you look at the distance at the top right corner of the navigation display. There it says we have 9.2 miles to go until the runway. Okay, the aircraft is now fully configured. Landing gear is down, we have flaps full. And we're in a stabilized descent. And also the vertical navigation bar is just uh, moving into the center again. Performing the VLS check, we can see that the VLS on the PFD is two knots higher than indicated on the FMS, and so I'm adding two knots on the V approach speed. This gives the five knot buffer between the VLS and the approach speed. So we'll read the landing checklist. We have uh, landing no blue, and also very important. On the non-precision approach, you have to confirm the QNH with the tower controller. And so he says that the QNH is 1009, which we have uh, set correctly. Okay, coming up to 4 miles from the runway, and the crossing altitude should be 2790. So the autopilot system is uh, spot on. One thousand. Checked. Okay, we're three miles. Crossing altitude is two thousand four hundred and eighty, which is absolutely correct. I'm now scanning the outside for the approach lights or runway lights. The reported ceiling was at around 500 feet, so uh, pretty marginal. Okay, ground visual contact. Hundred above. Four hundred. Minimum. Okay, no visual contact. Go around. Flaps. Flaps three. Mantoga SAS go on track and out of thrust blue. Positive climb, gear up. Okay, that was really unlucky. At the minimum call out, I didn't have the runway lights or the approach lights inside. And just as I said, go around, uh, the runway came inside, but obviously that was too late. The decision to go around was already made. But uh, that's uh, how it goes sometimes. Okay, so we now have thrust climb, open climb, nuff, and auto thrust. Alright, we're above F speed and accelerating, and so we'll select flaps 1.
1000 feet to go. Alright, we are now at S speed, so flaps zero. Well, at least uh, you not only got to see the RNF approach, you also uh, saw me do a go-around procedure. And once again, we are at the end of the video. I hope you've liked it. Post a comment down below if you have some questions. And also, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Happy landings, and I'll see you in the next one.